Good morning. Where are the mutants? It feels so weird not playing Marvel Champions after a week of playing all new Marvel Champions, but it is perfectly fun and fine because we have some new Arkham Horror contents. We today we are unboxing the Scarlet Keys Investigator Pack and taking a look at some of the new cards that came in this new new uh, expansion hey maddie this is gonna be interesting okay cool i'm excited i i i have no knowledge about what's in this although i do know that i think his name's charlie kane it is one of the investigators and he likes allies that is the extent of what i know about arkham horror the scarlet keys investigator expansion so i'm excited to go into this kind of completely blind and take a look at what we what new cards and what new toys we have so oof it's gonna be fun it's gonna be fun let's just uh let's just dive into it so many new stuff so this actually came out a week ago it was it came out on the same day that mutant genesis did for marvel champions and so i've actually had this for a little bit longer than i wanted to i wanted to do a unboxing earlier but just time did not allow me to do so but here we are today so the Scarlet Keys Investigator Expansion. There are a lot of cards in this thing. I'm pretty sure it would tell us on the back. Let's see. Usually it does. Usually it tells us how many cards there are. Oh, here we go. Uh, 228 player cards and then 48 upgrade sheets. So one of the, I guess like the other thing that I do know is that there are some upgradable cards or something along those lines. I don't know how those function, but I do know that they exist. Okay. Oh, look at all these cards. Oh, look at the back of that one. That's kind of cool. Not quite sure what that is, but that looks kind of cool. Let's put this up here so it looks fancy. Now we're gonna go over here. Arkham Horror. Paint the town red. Dilemmas and revelation abilities. New keywords. Customizable. So once we get to that, we may circle back to the customizable keyword. Just so we can get a better understanding of that. But let's just dive in. Okay. Carson Sinclair is our first investigator. I love new cards. There's so many of them too. Also good news. I... Fiber is ready. I ordered it. They're installing it on Tuesday. So hopefully customizable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So hopefully on Tuesday, a lot of the internet issues do go away. Okay. So Carson St. Clair got a two stat line across the, across the, uh, four different action or four different tests. You can take an additional action during your turn, which can only be used below on his personal action, which says choose another investigator at your location. They may immediately take an action as if it was their turn. Ooh, okay. So very supportive character here. And then the star effect is a plus zero draw one card. You can resolve this effect anytime another investigator at your location resolves their star effect. Wow, okay. So just very much a team player. I like that. Deck size 30. Start a creation. Choose Seeker, Mystic, or Survivor. Huh. Okay. And then deck building options. Guardians level 0 to 5 and neutral level 0. And up to 10 level 0 to 1 events and or skills of your chosen secondary class. Oh, you choose one of the secondary classes. Okay. Interesting. Kind of cool. I'm going to take that out because then it's not going to focus on the cards themselves. Oh my gosh, so many cards. As you wish. So this is for his deck only. Three wild resources. Commit only to a skill test performed by another investigator. So true solo Sinclair, let's go. Yeah, like that. that's kind of what I'm looking at. It's like you can't even use this card. This card is dead in a solo campaign, which I'm kind of surprised that they did. I'm, I'm like, I, I guess like I realized that a lot of people play this multiplayer, but I know a lot of people play it solo. So it's kind of interesting to publish a investigator that cannot be used solo or maybe that's the challenge right that's that's next month's challenge 
Commit, uh, if this test succeed, the performing investigator draws one card. If this test fails, you draw one card. Interesting. Okay. So we got two copies of that. And then selfless to a fault. Put selfless to a fault into play in your threat area. At the end of your turn, if you did not commit at least one skill test performed to another investigator this turn, take one horror and shuffle this back into your deck. Okay. I... I mean, very, very supportive character. It feels very similar to like what my play style would be. I very much enjoy the support characters, but I'm not even sure how this works in a two player game. I think maybe even like three is just from my limited knowledge, the minimum that you probably want to go with Carson because he feels very, very reliant on being near and with other people. I guess like there are and there are guardian cards that can really help him like the uh um oh shoot what am i thinking of the card that i had in mark's deck where you can follow after someone moves you can follow them um so you can use those types of cards to make sure that you're sticking with your teammates in order to trigger all of these abilities which is kind of cool next we've got the doctor vincent lee a 3-4-3-1 three, three, stat line. He ain't running from anything. After one of your card effects heals damage from an investigator or an investigator's ally asset, add one of your set aside on the min skills to that investigator's hand. And as a plus one, you can... Or as a star effect, plus one, you may heal one damage from investigator or ally asset to your location. Okay, so this also sounds very interesting and what I would like to do. Safeguard. Thank you, Maddie. Thank you. Um, this feels very up my alley as well deck size 30 secret cards level zero to three okay so cuts out access to zero five um any cards that heal damage level zero to five and up to 15 other cards and our survivor cards level zero to one guardian and or rogue or not rogue survivor they and then as a additional setup you begin each play with one copy of on the mend set aside one per investigator on the mend set aside outside of play he seems he seems really interesting um i like healers i like those types of healing builds um let's see what on the min does oh well we got bone saw first bone saw fight you get plus two fight for this attack if this attack is successful you may take one damage to heal you may take one damage to deal plus one damage for this attack and then as an action, heal five damage from investigator to your location. Test book four. If you fail, that investigator suffers one physical trauma. Whoa. Okay. That's that, that's something. Well, I guess if you are already at, like, if you need five damage healed, a lot of investigators may already be looking at a physical trauma that they, that they may take. <laughs> that other investigator best be committing some some book cards to that skill test because good lord that is that is some risky stuff right there that's funny on the mend limit once per limit one per on the mend in your hand commit oh it's a two uh wild when on the mend would be discarded from anywhere set aside out outside of play okay so once he heals he gives someone basically an unexpected courage in their hand i like that that's fun that's, that's one way to incentivize kind of healing the, the healing build and we got a wounded bystander as his weakness put this into play in your uh, area with three damage on it it cannot leave play while it has damage unless it's defeated if it has no damage discard it when you would take non-direct damage at least one of it must be assigned and then if he's defeated you suffer one mental trauma that's tough that's really really tough um he has five health, so you have to you have to heal it down at least three, and then play over top of it. Or I guess maybe you could just discard it at that point. Oof! He only he's a nine six. He has a ton of health to spare, but not mental trauma. If he takes some mental trauma, he could be in some serious trouble. That's really interesting. Huh. Okay. He has access to the secret cards, which is always, always good. But, hmm. Maddie, there's an investigator who specializes in healing horror. Vincent is like the healer, but for health. Interesting. Okay. That'd be, huh. 
wonder if they do they ever get anything done if they roll they roll together or is it just a they keep taking damage and then they keep healing each other <laughs> all righty can my jones the security consultant it's a three two two five so he is running away he's gonna let the doctor handle everything as a quick action engage an exhausted enemy at your location okay so when you attempt to evade an exhausted non-elite enemy add your book skill to this attempt if you succeed by at least x discard the enemy where x is the remaining health whoa okay okay wow uh effect plus one if there's an exhausted enemy at your location you automatically succeed instead okay so he is sitting here if you evade a non-elite enemy and succeed by their health or more you immediately discard them wow interesting and i'm not i have not played a lot of rogues so rogue is the class that i plan on playing next depending on if it lines up with my teammates choice but i do want to try a play a rogue through like a full campaign but i believe they have a lot of a lot of access to damage when exhausted enemies or when you evade deal damage and so having this five here as well as this uh evade that that seems pretty good. That brings it's really solid. Maddie, I no, you do you play rogues or guardian? You play a lot of rolling banks, right? If I'm remembering correctly. Maybe not. He's got a grappling hook. So this is an asset, a hand asset. Actions you performed using the grappling hook do not provoke attacks of opportunity. It has two actions. We can exhaust grappling hook, take up to three different basic actions from the following list. Uh, engage, evade, investigate, or move. If your investigate uses your feet instead of your book. Whoa, okay. That's solid. That's really solid. So you can investigate with five once you have that out. It does take two actions though. It is a two actions. You played Jenny most recently. She's the big money roll, pair herd with rolling. Nice, nice. So two actions to get a five investigate or fight, I guess. Interesting. Then Agent Fletcher, alert hunter. Uh, and then when he is, while uh, Jones is evading Agent Fletcher, reduce their book value to zero. Okay, so because it's a non-elite enemy, so you can add your book value to the evade attempt. He's evading for a seven on non-elite enemies. That's that's pretty sweet. That's really really cool. I like that. Evading for seven on non elite enemies. I'm sure that's easily boosted to an eight with a plus one book or plus one feet asset or something in his kit. He seems fun. He seems like a lot of fun. Alrighty, we got our seeker. A 3333 stat line across, or not a seeker, I'm sorry, our mystic. Uh, and then it's a chosen curse. When you play an asset, reduce its resource cost by three. Enters, it enters play with one doom on it. And then as a star effect, you can move all doom from your card at your location to another card at your location. That seems good, right? So she's a 5'9, she has very low health. Very, very low health. So you do have to manage that. But the having cards enter with doom on it then you build your deck around there are mystic cards out there that can clear doom so that's uh that feels pretty good it feels like a meditation from marvel where you're reducing the cost by three huh i'm interested i'm interested words of woe this is her asset Fast play only during your turn. Place one doom on an asset you control. Resolve a action ability on it, ignoring all cost. Then if words of wheel is in your discard pile, you may shuffle it into your deck. Okay, interesting. So all about adding doom. Star so yeah, it sounds like Star Lord. Yes, very much. Very much a risk reward. What could go wrong type play. A lot of doom getting added. A lot of doom getting added. But I, there are ways to mitigate it also you could like if you know you're gonna progress in your agenda 
next so if your x minus one on progressing in your agenda take all of these actions right go use her ability to place doom to reduce cost use her ability to activate stuff with ignoring cost to place doom because all doom gets cleared once you progress in your agenda and so when you're getting close just go for it just have some fun words of wheel fast play when you perform a skill test on an asset with one or more doom on it okay and then add your brain to your skill value for this test then if this is in your discard pile you can shuffle it into your deck i like i like that style of like use it and then you get to shuffle it into your deck i'm a big fan of that deafening silence so she is an operator so move one doom from an asset you control to the current agenda this may cause the current agenda to advance if no doom is moved this way sh shuffle this card back into your deck Ooh, that's a little scary wonder what these are right here at the bottom wonder what that means but that's uh that can get a little scary i like it Here's our survivor. Oh, it's a survivor with five book. It's a two, five, two, three. That seems like a really solid stat line. If you ask me, huh? Okay. So you've been the, you begin the play with, uh, Daryl's Kodak in play. And then as a fast action during a skill test at your location, spend one evidence from an asset you control, reduce the difficulty of this test by two. Then as a star effect, plus one, place one evidence on an asset you control. And it's a six, eight. Okay, so let's see what the codec is. But a five investigator, a five book sounds really good for that, for this uh, survivor class. After an enemy or treachery enters play, and this is what you start with in play. So this is, this starts out in play. Exhaust Daryl's codec, place one, after an enemy or treachery, place one resource from the token pull on that enemy or treachery as evidence and then after you discover any number of clues move that many evidence counters or treacheries at that location to daryl kodak and then you can spend evidence to make it easier so basically as bad things are coming out you're placing evidence on them and then once you resolve that You discover any number of clues move any evidence on enemies or treacheries at that location okay so the enemies don't drop the location but after you discover clues on the location then at, yeah after you discover clues on the location where there is the evidence probably from an enemy or a treachery there you then take the uh the clue then the no not the clue the evidence then the evidence can be spent to lower the difficulty by two interesting okay that seems like a really cool engine but it feels very it feels like a lot to kind of start to pull off no one in this cycle has a fight over three you are very correct that's that is interesting i guess oh i thought we were getting one more oh we do uh, no, he's a one. <laughs> he's a one fight, so definitely not over three. That is kind of interesting. I guess like with Daryl, it like once you spend your evidence, then it can become like it lowers the difficulty of the test by two. But yeah, no, you're so right. Interesting. Then our weakness here, ruined film. Oh no, remove four evidence from cards you control. For each evidence you cannot remove this way, take one horde. That sounds awful. I forgot to take a look at this. So survivor cards, level zero to five, secret cards, level zero to two. Wow, okay, so he got access to secret cards as well, level zero to two. So he's gonna be the clue finding survivor. And then she's mystic cards, zero to five, and charm cards level zero to four. I'm not quite sure who the charm cards are. And then our neutral investigator, Charlie Kane, I was correct on his name. So go team. You have three additional ally slots. Well, there you go. Just for fun, right? 
During a skill test, you're performing exhaust an ally asset you control. For this test, you get plus one skill value plus an additional plus one for each skill icon on that ally asset that matches this type skill test. Okay, so he, he feels like SPDR from Marvel Champions where you have all of your interfaces, you have all your allies out there and then you're using them for their abilities or you can use them for like resources or in this case, the, the uh, committed skill icons. So if you have... I'm sure we'll see I'm just gonna find a uh, an ally there's no allies there's one so if you had field agent out here you could exhaust her to get a plus one book or a plus one feet and it is you can only exhaust one and so I I am a little concerned about how well he's going to be able to pull off skill test so i i guess like i haven't looked at a lot of the allies skill icons very frequently but he feels like he um yeah, he feels like he could struggle because if you have one that has three skill icons he's only at a four interesting and plus one plus one so it's one plus the skill icon. So if you have, if you have someone with three skill icons, he's at a five. So that's good. But you're also exhausting him. Deck building. Choose two classes. And then you can choose ally cards level zero to five. Neutral cards level zero to five. And cards from your chosen classes zero to two. Okay, that feels like a fun deck build restriction. Though. Because you get to choose two classes out of any of the five classes. And that can really... Huh, okay. I, I think I like that deck building. You can, he's very customizable. Very, very customizable, which is pretty cool. Four allies too. You got Bonnie Wash. Okay, here you go. So two wilds, two wilds. So when, when Bonnie is in play, when she is in play, he has a four across the board for one skill test that round. So that's pretty cool. After you exhaust Bonnie Wild, ready another ally asset you control. Limit once per round. Very cool. She's a 2-2. And so, okay, so you got a little engine building there. I, Paul, Charlie Kane seems really fun. Huh. He, okay, okay. I feel like he would be really fun for someone who understands the game. And like, I feel like if I tried to play him, I would struggle pretty significantly, but I would have fun with him. Burden of Leadership. If you control no ally assets, shuffle this into your deck. Otherwise, for each ally asset you control, either exhaust it or deal it one direct damage and one direct horror. Woof. Ouch. Wow. I think, well, at least you unexhaust before you're going to draw that if you're drawing it during your upkeep phase. But wow, that can be, that can be pretty, pretty rough. Okay, so six new investigators. I think the two that really jump out to me are the rogue and then our Charlie Kane over here. These two feel kind of interesting as like support characters that I would be like kind of curious to run. Maddie needs to buy two charisma for six ally slots. Yes. Oh, that'd be sweet. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. Just just go crazy with the allies Every, you everyone gets an ally and then a lot of the allies okay so now i'm thinking about it like there's like dr millen gives you plus one book and so you have that book and then okay i could i could see how i could see how that could that could get kind of crazy hmm i am interested so pretty cool I think the one that I'm least interested in is over here, the the Doom. I think I'm least interested in our, our new Mystic. I had to do a double take for that Doctor. Oh, he heals and he has a Bone Saw. <laughs> Whenever I see Bone Saw, I just think about the first Spider-Man movie. Bone Saw. And he's fighting in the, the cage match. But all of them look, all of them look pretty interesting, but really these two look really cool these i think would be fun maybe in a higher player count game but and then daryl daryl looks like one that i would have to play he looks he looks like i may enjoy him but it feels like there's just so much there that it may be difficult to 
get an understanding for me who has not played the game extensively. So I'm not quite sure how the five book is really good though. The five book is really, really good. We're going to clean this up and start going into some of our cards. Carson Sinclair. But yeah, nobody over a three fight. Really interesting. I wonder if that has anything to say about the campaign. Is it going to be like a low fight campaign? Or how is that going to work? Okay, our first guardian card. It is four and it's customizable. Okay, so now we're going to read what the customizable cards do. It's a keyword that appears on some player cards in this expansion. Customizable cards might seem unremarkable at first, but have tremendous potential for improvement over the course of a campaign. By spending experience points, each one can be custom tailored to become a powerful... Hey, Lunacy4, thanks for the uh, follow. I appreciate it. By spending experience points, each one can be custom tailored for a powerful tool and investigator's kit. Our deck. Each customizable card starts at level zero and has a separate sheet containing the checklist of upgrades that can be purchased using experience points. Each upgrade is accompanied by one or more check boxes. Unlike, unless otherwise specified, a card by a card effect investigator can only mark the check boxes on an upgrade before or after a scenario when they are upgrading their deck or purchasing cards for their deck. Spending one point of experience allows an investigator to mark one check box on the upgrade sheet. To purchase an upgrade, an investigator must mark all of an upgrade's checkboxes. Once an upgrade is purchased, each copy of the card is paired with its treating as having that upgraded. Okay, so you are upgrading all of the cards in your deck with that name. Let me... I'm just going to find the upgraded cards then. Because I feel like we're going to have a much better time understanding what that means. If I'm guessing it's these purple cards. That's my guess. Oh, look at that. Okay, so this looks crazy all of a sudden, right? Like, because this card becomes with that text on it. That's a lot of text. So Hunted Armor uh, Enchanted, Hunter Armor gains a Relic Trike and takes up an Arcane slot instead of a Body slot. It can be assigned damage and or horror dealt to other investigators at your location for protected runes. Plus two health, plus two sanity. Minus one cost and playing it does not provoke attacks of opportunity. After one or more damage or horrors assigned to Hunter's armor from a treachery effect, it can exhaust to draw one card. And then after one or more damage or horror is assigned to Hunter's armor from an enemy attack, you can exhaust it to deal one damage to that enemy. By the by, are you continuing Carcosa? Are you done with it? I will I will play through Carcosa again. Uh the next stop is Starting next Friday, it was going to be this Friday, but our schedules got busy. Starting next Friday, I'm going to be running through Dunwich again with Professor Meg. So she's been on the can or been on the stream before with playing Marvel Champions, and then we played um, Sentinels of the Multiverse together. And so she has all the Arkham stuff, and so we're going to be playing through together the Dunwich campaign. And then probably after Dunwich, we'll dive into Scarlet Keys, and then I'll circle back to Carcosa. It's kind of the current plan. So, oh, and then I wonder why we only have three copies of these. Maybe they just don't expect everyone to run, run one. I mean, it, it seems interesting. Like it, it, it opens up and changes the way that we're going to be playing the game or we're going to it's, it's interesting i feel weird that i have to like mark on this card <laughs> um i guess like i don't have to or i guess like if i put in a sleeve you can use dry erase on the sleeve that would probably be the way that i would do it but i mean like you it's it's very customizable everything about this campaign so far or this investigator expansion so far feels very like you can tailor to the situation that you're in. And so that's kind of that's kind of interesting. I really like the can be assigned damage in or horror from other investigators to your location. It feels like Mark would really like this card because he can bump up the health, start taking damage from other. Um Rajat. Yeah, I think you can write it in a notebook as a part. Yeah, very true. Yeah, a notebook would be a really good way to do that as well. Um 
yeah i it, it's interesting it's it's a lot especially like i i'm not gonna have a new player take a customizable card because that's so many options but it's cool it's cool i do like how you can take up a arcane slot so you can if you check this then you can have both of these out at the same time right because you have two arcane slots and if you're running a guardian then you probably don't aren't using your arcane slots but it, 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 it's interesting it's very interesting i have to figure now i have to figure out how to store these in my binder <laughs> that's what i'm thinking about i guess i could put them right next to each other so that i could see them or maybe under <laughs> Okay, Runic Axe. So this is also customizable. Uses four charges. Replenish one of these charges at the start of each. Oh, that's cool. Okay. So fight. You can get plus one for this attack. Before the attack, you can spend any number of charges to imbue the axe with that many different transcriptions. Accuracy, you get plus two for the attack. Or power, you get plus one damage. Interesting. Okay. Personally, I like the feeling of journal writing during the Arkham Horror gameplay. It seems like an invest. Yeah, it really does seem like something an investigator would do. And you could, yeah, you could keep it in your your own journal. That okay, yeah, that that seems very thematic and fun. So runic axe, heirloom. It can get minus one cost and gains the relic trait. I wonder if relic. So like, I want. I I don't think you can. But yeah, I don't think you can like, I know, I think it's Ursula Downs can take relic cards, but I'm pretty sure you can't take this and the upgrade at the same time because you, the first step would be taking this card, which is not a relic card. So I'm pretty sure that you can't do that. Be kind of interesting though. So. Add this inscription. Oh, oh, so it's, it's adding a different effects that you can spend your charges for. That's pretty cool. Okay. So if this attack defeats an enemy, choose one draw a card and heal a damage or heal one whore. You can do the elders. So add the inscription. If this attack succeeds by an amount equal to or greater than of your location shroud, discover one clue at that location. Okay. That's cool. Hunt, immediately move to a connecting location or engage an enemy at your location. If this attack is successful, in addition to its standard damage, deal one damage to each other enemy engaged with you. That one seems situationally good. Ancient power, you can imbue the same inscription up to three times. Whoa. Huh, okay. Saga, replenish two charges instead of one. And then script weaver for every charge spent you can imbue the axe with up to two different inscriptions okay that's pretty cool i i like that i i i i like okay so i'm starting to like these customizable cards i think that these are pretty fun they feel very all in on the strategy right because like if you take the runic axe then for like in one of I think my one of my bigger games you get five or six experience so you spend four of it here and one of it here for one card so your deck isn't really changing but your runic axe is getting better so it's like you're upgrading the runic axe but it's so customizable it I this is pretty cool I like this mechanic it adds so much interesting replay to the investigators yeah that's so true that is so true and it builds the way that you want it to be uh, I like it I like it. I like. Yeah, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I'm going to probably run one of these in my next campaign. I don't know what I'm doing. I guess I'll have to look at what the road cards look like, but it's pretty cool. We have more customizable cards. So level three custom modification attached to a fire. Oh, okay. So this attaches. Oh my gosh. Okay. So the custom modification attaches to a custom or. A customizable card attaches to another card, so it's probably going to make that card customizable. Attach to a fire mark asset you control living once per... When you reveal a non auto fail chaos token when attacking with the chosen asset, exhaust custom modification to cancel that chaos token, return it to the bag, and reveal a new one. Interesting. And I think you can also plan what to upgrade in early and what late in the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... 
there okay so there are ways are there ways to tutor or to like search for like weapons and everything i think there are i think i saw some of those in in some of the guardian cards at least but that would be my only concern which i guess is not a huge concern but like if your runic axes are just you're all in strategy and it looks incredible and you do insane things with the runic axes if both of them are at the bottom of your deck that's fine or that that kind of stinks but the other thing is is like because you are customizing every copy in your deck you're just the experience point is almost like double valuable if that makes any sense so like once you unlock hunter's armor to go to four health all your hunter's armors are four health so that that i that's pretty cool so custom modifications customizable card <laughs> it sounds so funny notch sight when you perform an attack with the attached asset against an enemy engaged with another investigator and fail you deal no damage okay that feels very situational extended shock you get plus two fight while attacking with the attached at whoa okay nice extended stock and then counterbalance after you attach an upgrade card other than custom modifications to the attached asset up draw one card leather grip custom modification gets minus one cost and gains fast play only during your turn okay cool okay so that's nice extended mag after ammo is spent from or placed on an attachment asset by another event place one ammo on the attached asset then if you succeed by three or more while attacking it gets deals plus one damage they i'm sure these are fine i'm just i haven't used a ton of firearm assets to know if those are as as good oh no nope, wrong one okay so we're out of our customizable cards for guardians oh my goodness we can buy viewers are you kidding me that's so exciting why has it gotten it's gotten so much recently they just keep coming Maybe, maybe I need to buy viewers and they'll go away. Okay. <laughs> Obsidian bracelet. So this is a hand slot. This is a hand slot with three health, three sanity. That's kind of interesting. And it can only be assigned damage and or horror dealt by treachery effects. Okay. And then obsidian bracelet can maybe assign damage and or horror dealt to other investigators at your location okay so that's pretty cool i like that um it's kind of nice it kind of kills the axe though because you i want that hand slot i feel like the obsidian bracelet should go around the wrist it shouldn't take up a hand slot but you know I, i'm just nitpicking at this point uh bolas Attempt to evade using fight instead of your evade. If you succeed and the enemy is not elite, attach this to it. And then attached enemy gets minus one evade value. And then after the enemy moves exhausted. Whoa. Okay. So that's kind of nice. I feel like that would be really good in a rogue deck. And I wonder if we can take that with our rogue. Well, we would have to use our fight instead of our... That's how it's balanced. No, we, we couldn't even take it with that rogue, but I'm sure there's a rogue out there that could utilize that to a uh, pretty good potential. Breach the door. Test fight one. Hopefully you don't fail that one. If you succeed, attach breach the door to your location with one resource on it for each point you succeed. Reduce the attached location shot by one for each lead on breach the door. Interesting. Okay, that's cool. Have you already decided which investigators to play in my next Carcosa run? I have not. I have not uh, taken a look at that yet. I'll do another stream and deck build for that at some point. The other thing is for the Dunwich run that we're starting next Friday, we're not going to do a deck building stream for that. We're going to do that off stream um, before we before we got, jump on. But I do want to play a Rogue on the next Dunwich. And then probably the next will be Scarlet Keys. Don't know which I'm doing that, but... I'm always I'm always open to suggestions because there are so many of them out there. Grievous wound. Dude, that is some brutal artwork. Look at that. That looks crazy. 
Fast, play after you successfully attack a non-elite enemy using a melee asset. Attach Grievous Wound to the attached enemy. At the end of the round, deal one damage to the attached enemy. Whoa, okay. That's interesting. Non-elite, so kind of... But I'm, there are some there's some beefy non elite out there. That's kind of that's kind of cool. So one for one damage, and then you evade it and run away and just have it die. Yeah. So the bolas and the grievous wound combine together. So you attack it, evade it, attach bolas, attach grievous wound to it, and then you can just let it kill itself. And it's gonna run at you, but that's gonna be fine. It's kind of interesting. Motivational speech. Here's Charlie. I think. That kind of looks like Charlie. Parlay. Choose to investigate your location. That investigator may play an ally asset from their hand, reducing its cost by three. Whoa. Okay. That's pretty sweet. Charlie loves it. One in the chamber. Fast, play at the end of an attack or an effect that spends the last ammo from a firearm asset you control. Add one ammo to that asset. You get plus three skill value for your next attack with that asset this round. That's pretty cool. I like that. I like that. Fighting lessons. Commit to, only to a skill test during an attack or an evasion attempt. You can commit this. You can commit this skill to an investigator's test at any location. Huh, okay. That's kind of cool. Helping hand. You may commit helping hand to help to any type of test. Max one per committing test. While helping hand is committed to a test, double the skill icons of each other card committed to. Whoa. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so Carson Sinclair has got a little engine going, doesn't he? That's pretty cool. I feel like this combined with that tome that I had. Interesting in a multi... Yeah, very interesting in a multiplayer game. With that uh, tome that I had, where it was for every point I succeed, I gain an additional clue. And I was... Like, I had like six skill icons. That becomes 12. Uh, that's... That can get pretty crazy. We have zero. We have zero level one cards. I'm guessing because they're probably trying to incentivize you to using these customizable cards. So we jumped straight to level two. Bestow resolve. Use four charges. This is an arcane slot. During a skill test performed by an investigator at your location or a connecting location, spend one charge. Commit a non-weakness card from your hand to that skill test, treating all of its skill icons as wild. Okay, it's pretty cool. Field agent, you get plus one book. Exhaust field agent, deal one horror to it. Discover one clue at your location. That seems really good. It seems really solid. Guard dog, we've seen this before. Exhaust guard dog, engage an enemy at your location. That enemy attacks you. When an enemy at attack deals damage and or horror to guard dog, deal one damage to the attacking enemy. Card designed by the Council and Exile by Arkham Knights 2020. That's kind of fun. That's cool. I like that. That's fun. Seems good. For Guard Dog or Bestow Resolve? Bestow Resolve, yeah, because so I, I'm running a campaign with some buddies that I I I don't know how to pronounce her name. But he's running her. The one with charges. Yeah. He's running her. And this feels really good for her. Um, because the arcane slot, he's running dragon pull, which gives her like plus attack based on how many arcane slots are taken up. And then you can use these wilds. The dog seems good for Daniela Rays. I don't think I am familiar with Daniela Rays. I like the dog though. It's kind of interesting. Handcuffs. So fast. If handcuffs is attached to an enemy, evade. Use only on a humanoid enemy. This evasion attempt uses fight instead of feet. 
If you succeed, remove all doom from the just evaded enemy and attach handcuffs to it. If the attached enemy is not elite, it cannot ready and doom cannot be placed on it. Alrighty, so just lock them down. I like it. She's from Edge of the Earth. Oh, okay, so I, I do have her. All my cards are in the other, other room. Does she like to take damage on assets or something? More level two guards prepared for the worst. Choose investigator to your location. That investigator searches the top nine cards of their deck for a weapon. There it is. Okay, weapon asset and adds it to their hand or plays it, paying its resource costs and shuffles their deck. So that's how you can get runic axe really easily. Nine cards and then it's an action if you have the money to immediately play it. So that's really cool. Yeah. I like cards like these, especially when your entire kind of um sorry i just looked at the next card it looks crazy i like cards like these especially when your entire strategy is built around like a fully upgradable runic axe and you want to find it as quickly as possible this is effectively two more copies of the axe in your deck also has three bonus icons yeah yeah Okay, so Martyr's uh, Vambrace. So this is a three cost card. You get plus one skill value when resolving revelation abilities on encounter cards. Okay. After another investigator at your location draws a non-parallel encounter card before resolving that card's effects, exhaust this. You are considered to have drawn the encounter card instead. Cool. It's a two, two. All right, we got a new ally, a four cost level four ally. And then he cannot be assigned damage and maybe assigned damage and or horror dealt to other investigators at your location. Okay. This this would have felt really good for Mark as well. During a skill test you perform by an investigator at your location, exhaust him. That investigator gets plus two skill value for this test. If this test is successful, heal one damage or horror from this card. Wow. Yeah, that's a, that's a really nice level four ally right there then i think charlie is gonna like that a lot right charlie can take any of them ally cards level zero to five so this is you know a wild in in addition to his plus one so if you're well i guess you want to exhaust well yeah you can exhaust and heal that's fun i like this card I like this card a lot. And then our one level five card for the guardians in this pack is ever vigilant. One at a time, investigators at your location as a group may spin, may play up to four assets in total from their hand, reducing the resource cost of each by one. Wow. Feels like some of the teamwork cards are the Alliance cards that we started to see in Marvel. But I mean, that that's a reduction of four resources if you maximize the effect, which is pretty crazy. And it's one action. So it's the resource benefit, but it's mainly it's the, uh, it's the, um, it's the action tax, right? You're saving so many actions. Have to go see. I hope to watch you the rest on YouTube. Alrighty. Yep. I'll throw it up on YouTube. Have a good one. Happy Friday. I'm going to, probably store the customizable cards separately from the other ones just so I don't have to go search them for them all the time the customizable cards do seem pretty sweet I think I'm gonna enjoy building a deck around that there are the guardian cards Anything that jumped out to anyone watching? Let's go to Seeker next. Alchemical Distillation. 
Customizable, uses three supplies. Spend one supply, choose investigator at your location and test book one. If you succeed, that investigator performs one of the following options. Draw two cards, gain two resources. Okay, well this seems crazy already. Let's see what the customizable upgrades are. So again, we can spend one experience point to check these boxes. Once we have checked all of the boxes next to the ability, we unlock that ability for this card. Add this option, heal two damage, uh, heal two horror. Place one charge on a secret or an asset you control, charge or secret on an asset you control. Uh, move up to two times. Wow, that seems strong. Refined. Enters play with two additional charges on it, so our supplies on it. So it comes in with three, and then that would be upgraded to five. And so I like that one. Empowered, when you initiate the skill test, you can increase its difficulty by two. If you do, you increase the value of the effect granted by each option by one for the test. Okay. Probably worth it in a lot of decks. In a lot of decks. And then perfected, if you succeed by two or more, the chosen investigator will perform two different options instead of one. Very cool. I, yeah, that seems really fun. And again, like so many different ways to customize it that you can, you can alter it to the campaign. You can alter it to your play style and alter it to what the team needs. Just, I like it. Empirical hypothesis. So this is also a customizable limit one per investigator and then at a force at the start of the round choose one of the following criteria for the round if you fail a test by two or more or if you succeed at a test by three or more when the criteria is met you may exhaust imperial hypothesis and add one evidence to it you can spin one evidence to draw a card as a fast action okay Then the upgrades here are pessimistic outlook at the at the following criteria. You run out of cards in your hand. Okay, that's fun. Uh, uh, you are dealt damage or horror as trial and error. I feel like I would be really good at that one. Independent variable. You discard a treachery or an enemy from play. Okay, field research. That's I mean that feels very like situationally good, right? If your build allows you to do that, especially with like enemies, then that'd be great. Uh, you enter a location with three or more shrouds for field research. Cool. Okay. Peer review. The chosen criteria is met if any investigator at your location meets it instead of only you. Other investigators at your location may trigger fast abilities on empirical hypothesis. So really upping the teamwork there. That's pretty cool. I like that. Uh, research grant. Uh, again, spend two resources, reduce the cost of your next card you play this phase by three. Wow. Okay. Irrefutable proof. Uh, again, a fast action, spend three evidence, discover one clue at your location. And then alternative hypothesis. After you exhaust empirical hypothesis, you may resolve its forced effect, choosing any criteria you've not chosen this round, then ready it. Wow. So, so much custom customization. I, I'm a big fan of these cards so far. They seem like a lot. I think that may be a complaint that I expect to, I, I fully expect to see at some point is that there's, there's just a lot of choices to be made with them, but I like that, especially in a game where you're growing with the campaign, your investigators are growing, your deck is growing and you are trying to adapt to the campaign. I feel like these customizable cards allow you to do that so well. So big fan. The Raven Quill customizable. When you spend, when you purchase the Raven Quill, name a tome or spell asset and record its name on the upgrade sheet. Okay. Attached to the named asset you control. When you resign or the game ends, either mark a checkbox on the Raven's Quill upgrade sheet or reduce the experience cost to upgrade the attached asset before the next scenario by one. Okay. Okay. It seems very wordy, but I feel like it probably works pretty well. So this can be upgraded. So you write down the name of the tome or asset that you have. So this could be like shriveling or something like that. 
and living quill using the attached assets ability does not provoke attacks of opportunity interesting spectral binding attached asset does not take up any slots whoa okay mystic vein you get plus two skill value while performing skill tests on the attached asset okay endless inkwell name two or more tomes but oh so you oh endless inkwell you can start adding this to multiple different copies of or multiple different spells in your deck that's pretty cool energy sap the raven quill gains as a fast action you can exhaust raven's quill move one secret or charge from an asset you control to the attached asset oh okay so you, you can you can you can spread it out and, and make that okay oh you can make that attachment even better interwoven ink after you resolve an action ability on the attached asset you may exhaust it the raven's quill to ready another asset you control okay supernatural record when you play the raven's quill instead of attaching it to the named asset you control you may search your deck discard pile in hand for a copy of the named asset and play it paying its cost then attach raven's quill to it okay well there you go that's really cool because that, that right there tutors itself basically tutors what you're looking for so huh interesting interesting kind of goes all in on the what am i doing with my life Okay. Cool stuff with the Raven's Quill. Dissection tools. So we're outside of our customizable cards now. So dissection tools. As a reaction, after an enemy at your location is defeated, place one resource on it. I, on this card. As evidence. While dissection tools has one or more, you get plus one feet. Two or more, you get plus one fight. Three or more, you get plus one sanity. Whoa. Okay. That's cool. Huh. That's pretty cool. Grim Memoir. Four secrets. Spin one secret. Investigate. You get plus two book for this investigation. If you can see by two or more, you may draw a card. Wow. That seems good. That seems really good. Takes up a hand slot. Running this with the magnifying glass. <laughs> Research notes. So as a reaction, after a player card ability places one or more of your clues on your location, place that many resources on research clues as evidence. Test book zero for each point you succeed by you can spend one evidence to discover one clue at your location okay so you're just getting your clues back if you drop them bizarre diagnosis place one of your clues on your location then heal three damage from investigator ally at your location okay so now we're starting to see the combos so if we have bizarre diagnosis and then we can go find them easier with research notes and you're healing three damage from an investigator while you're at it. That's cool. I like that. And then that combos really well with our new seeker, which, uh, where are we? Where's our new seeker? Yep. So after one of your card effects heals a investigator ally asset, add one of your set aside. So this card here, you heal three, then you get to get an on the mend, which is basically another copy of unexpected courage in their hand. So like that. Captivating Discovery. Search the top six cards of your deck. You can place up to three of your clues on your location. For each clue placed this way, choose and add two of the searched cards to your hand. Shuffle your deck. Wow. Okay, so now we're starting to see some major combos with the research notes over here. That's fun. Map the area. 
investigate add your brain or feet to the skill value for this investigation if you succeed instead of discovering clues at your location attach this to it reduce the difficulty of all skill tests at the attached location by one that feels good that feels really good especially when you're looking at some of these bigger monsters or you're looking at uh you know the pinnacle area the pinnacle the final room in this scenario you throw map the area on it and then everyone else at that location is getting significantly better fights or evades or all of that so that seems pretty good that seems pretty good situationally good i guess here's our skill card analysis after revealing a chaos token for this skill test you may place one of your clues on your location to cancel that chaos token return it to the chaos bag and reveal a new one you may do this any number of times <laughs> nice so you can just be spinning the clues to get them that, that's fun and i like the combo with the research notes it feels pretty good it feels pretty solid we got lab coat this is a level one upgrade it takes up a body slot when you would fill a skill test on a seeker card by one or less exhaust lab coat you succeed by zero instead nice seems situational Orpic Therapy uses four secrets, another level one card. Spin one secret, choose an enemy or non weakness treachery and a not attach to an enemy, elite enemy. Until the end of the round, treat that card's printed text box as if it were blank. I'm sure that means something to somebody. Um, I guess okay so it doesn't have to be attached to an enemy it just cannot be attached to an elite enemy so so okay so that means that you can go with like the locked door you can go with all of these like hindrance of movements all the ones that are attached to the agenda just anything that's not attached to an elite enemy when i first read it i thought that you had to find one that was attached to a non-elite enemy but was still attached to an enemy so that that seems a little bit better now oh i like this art look at that that's so cool existential riddle parlay choose a non-elite enemy at your location and test brain or book eight whoa okay this test gets minus one difficulty for each other card in your hand if you succeed automatically evade the chosen enemy and attach this riddle to it and the attached enemy gains aloof okay so that feels good especially for harvey when you have 11 cards in your hand you're testing book zero and stuff like that and then you're able to give it aloof so if it's an enemy you just don't want to deal with, that takes it out of the game effectively. Again, so we started the Dunwich campaign uh, with with two of my friends. I'm not streaming it, but stupid whippoorwills. I forgot about them. They came back. I hate those whippoorwills. They're everywhere. We have another. Are we have another level one card guidance? Choose an investigator at your location who has yet to take their turn this round. During their turn. The chosen investigator gets plus one to each of their skills and may take an additional action. Uh, playing guidance does not provoke attacks of opportunity. That feels really good. You're giving them one of your actions. Very situational, but you can hang on to it until you absolutely need it. And then give the guardian plus one action, plus one skills. Let them take care. I like this card. I like this card a lot. This is pretty sweet. I'm a big fan of that one. Dr. William T. Malson. So this is a level two. When an investigator draws an encounter card from the encounter deck, exhaust this card and place one of your clues on your location. That investigator draws another card from the top of the encounter deck, chooses one of those two cards to resolve and cancels and discards the other. Solid, solid, I like it. Press pass. Level two, four costs, big, big costs here. After you spend one or more clues or place one of your more clues on your location, exhaust press pass. You may take an additional action during your turn or your next turn if it's not currently your turn. That's cool. That's cool. I'm liking the archetype that we're seeing form here where we're discarding clues, getting benefits for discarding those clues and then being able to grab them really easily back with research notes. I think that's pretty fun. I'm, I'm, I, I like that. Surgical kit. 
uses four supplies. Oh, we have dissecting tools. That is something kind of interesting is we haven't seen a an upgrade to a card that we've gotten in this pack yet. So we haven't seen a level, a higher level card of any of the level zero cards, which maybe they're doing all the customizable cards to kind of replace that. Surgical kit. Four supplies. When one of your card effects heals damage from an investigator, spend one supply. Either that effect heals one additional damage or you draw one card and heal one whore. Cool. Heal three damage from an investigator ally as set at your location for two actions. Our new medic likes that. The doc likes it. Fingerprint kit. Three supplies. Exhaust fingerprint kit and spend one supply. Investigate you have plus two book for this investigation. If you succeed, discover two additional clues at your location. Ooh, wait. Did I just stick my foot in my mouth? I feel like I just read this card. Oh, Grim Rimar. They they are so similar, but they're they're not this they're not upgrade they're not the same name card, which is kind of interesting. Um so plus two and get two additional clues. Yeah, that's a level five card. Five cost card. Makes a lot of sense. Then Grey's Anatomy. Ooh, I love the show. <laughs> I didn't I didn't realize the show was around during Arkham times. So three cost card. Uh, choose a card at your location and test book one. For each point you succeed, choose one. The next time that card would be healed this round, heal plus one damage or horror, maximum plus three. The next time that card would be dealt damage this round, deal plus one damage to a maximum plus three. I like it. So choose a card at your location, text book one. So you could be just like a complete horrible teammate and say, I'm gonna choose your investigator card and now you take a plus three damage every attack. If you wanted to just be that guy, but I, I assume that you don't get to play a lot more with, with anybody if you do that, so. Interesting secret cards. I like the little archetype that we're starting to build where we're dropping clues and then getting those clues back really easily. There's a lot of healing stuff that's coming out with the secret cards because of the because of the um, investigator that we got with the doc. And so I'm liking that. That's pretty cool. All right, I'm gonna go be right back. I'm just gonna go grab a drink real quick. See you in a, just a couple seconds. Alrighty, let's go with the rogue cards next because I'm thinking I'm, I'm wanting to play a rogue next and so let's see what they can do. I hope we get a really cool customizable card here because it would be fun to run customizable card through my next campaign. Damning testimony, four cost asset, customizable, comes in with three evidence. We can exhaust damning testimony and choose an enemy at my location. Um, investigate your location. If you succeed, you may spend one evidence to discover one additional clue at the in chosen enemy's location. Okay. 
Let's see how that gets customized. Okay, so search warrant. While investigating using damning testimony, you can ignore any effect or keyword on the investigated location that would trigger. Okay. Fabricated evidence. Damning testimony enters play with two additional evidence on... That's funny. That's funny. Blackmail. You get plus two book while investigating using damning testimony. Okay. Okay. I like that. Uh, extort. When you successfully investigate using damning testimony, you may spend one evidence to automatically evade the chosen enemy. Okay, cool. Surreal. You may use damning testimony's ability to investigate the chosen enemy's location instead of your location. Alrighty, so you're, you're investigating like over there. That's pretty cool. I like that. And four cost exposed. When you successfully investigate using damning testimony, you may spend X evidence to discard the chosen enemy as it if it is a non-elite, X is that enemy's remaining health. Interesting. Cool. Okay. Friends in low places. I think this may be the first event we've seen that's been customizable. Asset, 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 asset. Oh no, custom modifications is in a is an event, but you attach it to a firearm asset. So it's kind of it's kind of like a uh, asset. It goes on the table. So customize it when you purchase friends in low places. Choose and record a trait on its upgrade sheet. Look at the top six cards of your deck. For each looked at card with the chosen traits, you may spend one resource to add that card to your hand. Shuffle the remaining cards in your deck. Okay. I'm already kind of liking where this one's going. So you choose the trait. So that could be firearm, that could be item, relic, tome, whatever you want. When you play friends in low places, you may choose another investigator to location to resolve its effects. Okay. Versatile, choose another trait. Um, whenever or when you play friends in low places, you can choose one of the looked at cards with both chosen traits to add to your hand by spending one resource. Okay, there you go. Bolstering, each card added to your hand in friends in low places gains a wild icon until the end of the phase. So you can start... Okay. Interesting. So you can start getting... Uh, a lot of or you can choose like cards that are gonna have a lot of that's kind of interesting instead of like using them to play you're using them to commit so that that could be interesting clever instead of shuffling the remaining cards into your deck you may place each of them on top of your deck in any order okay um that's nice prompt friends in low places gains fast and plays during any quick action window Experience increase the number of cards looked at by three and swift. You may play one of the cards added to your hands paying its cost. I like it less now, honestly. <laughs> um, I'm sure it can be really solid in certain deck builds. Honed instinct. So this is another event customizable fast play only after one of the following actions is met. The agenda or act advances are you succeed at a skill test by three or more immediately take an action as if it is if it were your turn max one per round let's see what it customizes to oh there's oh yeah there are three copies of all of these aren't there i think there's only There's only two copies of friends in low places. Maybe I'm just going crazy. So honed instinct. Add the following play condition. You take damage or horror. Okay. Or a location enters play or is revealed. An enemy engages you or a treachery enters your threat area or you play an asset. So just a ton of different ways to trigger this card. And whenever it gets triggered, you can take an action as if it was your turn. This is an event though. So you do have to have it in your hand. 
Uh, during the action granted by Hone Technique or Honed Instinct, you get plus two to each of your skills. Impulse Control, you may include up to three copies of Hone Instinct in your deck. Hone Instinct gets minus one cost. Okay, there you go. So now you have three levels or zero cost Honed Instincts that just kind of give you more actions. That's pretty cool. Force of Habit, so this is a five cost upgrade. I don't think we've seen one of those. I think everything else has been four. When you play Honed Instinct, you can take two actions instead of one, one at a time, then remove it from the game. That's pretty sweet. That is pretty sweet. Alrighty, we've, we're moving away from our customizable cards. We've got Disguise. Four supplies. You can evade to get plus two feet for this evasion attempt. If you succeed, the evaded enemy is not elite. It does not ready during the next upkeep phase. So it stays evaded for a long time. That's pretty sweet. It is a three cost card, which is kind of expensive. But if you're running big money, which some rogues can do, it seems pretty sweet. Embezzled treasure. As a fast action, we can exhaust embezzled treasure. Move up to two resources from your resource pool to embezzled treasure with to a maximum of 10 on it. When you resign or the game ends, for every two resources on Embezzled Treasure, an investigator of your choice begins the next scenario of the campaign with one additional resource in their campaign pool. Um, I feel like it could be it it could work really well for certain parties, and if you're running big money, then it can work really well. I think I like it, especially. If you have a scenario where you are trying to figure out what to do or like um, like there are scenarios where you can kind of prolong and continue to build up, build up, build up and embezzled treasure could work and do that really well. So if someone could start the next scenario with 10 resources, which could, you know, very much change the game for them, get something really big into play or two things, two really big things into play starting out. It just feels like a. I think I've talked myself out of it. It feels like so much setup. Hmm. Got thieves kit. Six supplies. Spend one supply. Investigate. Use your feet and say your book for this investigation. If you succeed, gain one resource. Yeah, that's a big plus for me. I like that a lot. Hidden pocket. Fast play only during your turn. Attach clothing. Attach to a clothing or armor asset you control. You have one additional hand or accessory slot, which can only be used to hold an illicit asset. Nice. That's fun. Thematically, that's great. My table has started creaking and it's annoying me. I need to figure out how to fix that. I was recording a video yesterday and it's creaking throughout the video. Hit and run. Fast play only during your turn. Put an ally asset into your hand from your hand into play at the end of your turn if that asset's on play return it to your hand hey it's sneak attack i found sneak attack everybody zero cost i'll take that fast play when you six play when you successfully evade a humanoid enemy or successfully investigate Play an item asset from your hand, reducing its cost by X, where X is the amount you succeeded by. Attach, I'll take that to the I asset, and the attached asset gains illicit. Okay, that's pretty fun. That's pretty fun. You start... Huh, okay. There's some... Yeah. Yeah. It's just more money. More money saving. Rogues are all about the money. Kicking the hornet's nest. That's cool art. I like that art a lot. Search the top nine cards of the encounter deck for a non-elite enemy and spawn it engaged with you instead of its normal spawn location. Then discover one clue at your location and gain X resources where X is that enemy's health value. Shuffle the encounter deck. Feels pretty good. It feels like a uh, one way or another from Marvel or a uh, looking for trouble where you go get something and then you can combo off of the enemy, right? If you don't have an enemy, but you want an enemy to evade to start 
triggering a lot of your other cards that you have you go find it you get a benefit for finding it you get two benefits for finding it you get a clue and money and then you can evade and kill or something like that seems pretty cool quick getaway fast play when an enemy attacked you evade attempt to evade the attacking enemy if you succeed cancel the enemy's attack nice so I'm, I'm looking at friends in low no honed instinct nope friends in low places so i'm choosing a trait i'm choosing a trait on a card this is a trick 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 and then also we have illicit 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 so starting to kind of get an idea for some of the rogue cards that you can start to kind of tutor and you get a lot of illicit cards a lot of trick cards so i feel like you build a deck around that it seems kind of fun calculated risk max one per committed skill test commit only to a test you are performing of any type and only if it's your turn calculated risk gains a wild for each action you perform this turn including this one after this test ends in your turn okay so up to three but if you're running like a honed instinct and you take two additional actions and calculated risk is like a five i like that that's pretty sweet so you can start comboing it with all of these cards that give you additional actions isn't there a rogue ally that gives you an additional action too or am i was i dreaming about that i feel like there was stylish coat so this is a body slot two cost level one card when you gain one or more resources during your turn via another player card effect exhaust stylish stylish coat gain one additional resource all righty i like him chuck fergus when you play a tactic or trick event exhaust chuck fergus choose one i feel like i've seen him before i feel like i've seen chuck on previous art um he's an o'bannon driver and we were messing around with the o'bannon gang in uh dunwich so that it, that event gains fast the event costs two fewer resources to play i get plus two skill value when performing a skill test during the resolution of that event that's pretty sweet that's pretty cool i like that dirty fighting that guy looks brutal. That guy looks like he's seen some stuff. Limit one per investigator. While attacking, parlaying, or attempting to evade an exhausted enemy, you get plus two skill value. Why would you attempt to an evade an... Oh, I guess maybe you could exhaust an enemy and not evade them. After you evade an enemy, exhaust dirty fighting. Take a fight action against that enemy. Ignore the aloof keyword for this attack. So dirty fighting can combo off calculated risk as well, which is kind of cool. So that gives you an additional action. So take a fight action against that enemy. So if dirty fighting is the, or if you evade as your third action, you can do a reaction to fight, play a calculated risk for four wild resources. That feels pretty comboy. I like that. Breaking and entering. Investigate, add your feet value to the skill value for this investigation. If you succeed by one or more, you may automatically evade an enemy at this location. If you succeed by three or more, return breaking and entering to your hand at the end of the turn. This action does not provoke attacks of opportunity. That's cool. We got, oh, here's, here's our first upgrade. A uh, thieves kit. Six supplies instead of... Nope, still six supplies. Cost the same. So spend one, investigate for this investigate. You can use your feet instead of book and you get plus one skill value. If you succeed, gain one resource, two resources if you succeed by two or more. Nice. Nice. We got Trigger Man. After Trigger Man enters play, attach an illicit asset from your hand to Trigger Man. 
It's considered to be in play and under your control. Exhaust Trigger Man and spend one resource. Resolve a action ability on the attached asset without paying its action cost. Resolve that ability with a base skill value of four. Okay. Oh, I was like, why Why is this level two in the middle of all the level fours? It's because it's exceptional. So Underworld Market. So this is an exceptional card, meaning that it costs double. So it's going to be a four cost to upgrade, but it's a level two card. Uh, you get plus 10 deck size. I don't... Off the bat, this does not sound good to me. But return before... Before drawing your opening hand, choose 10 illicit cards from your deck. Shuffle them together and place them next to the Underworld Market as your market deck. Well, there you go. I should just read the card. At the start of your turn, you can reveal the top two cards of the market deck. You can spend one resource to draw one of them. Place the rest back on the bottom in any order. That feels pretty cool. That feels pretty interesting. And then a level four card. We don't get a level five card in Rogue either. Zero cost. Clean sneak, fast play only during your turn. For each exhausted non-swarm enemy at your location, choose to get different option. Gain two resources, deal two damage to that enemy, discover one clue at your location, and draw one card. Cool. Interesting stuff for rogues. Um, nothing that really jumped out. I guess like calculated risk seems interesting, but... Yeah, nothing that... Nothing that really hopped out to me with the, these rogue cards. So, little, little disappointed in that just because I was hoping to see some really cool rogue cards for the next run. But here we are. Okay, let's go into our mystic cards. Living Ink, customizable. When you purchase Living Ink, choose a skill and then circle it on the upgrade sheet. Uh, use three charges. Remove one charge from Living Ink at the start of each of your turns. If Living Ink has no charges, discard it. Then you get plus one to the chosen skill. Okay. So you choose a skill being Brain Book, Fight, or Evade. And so while this is out, which is three charges, or you could add more charges via other methods, you get plus one to that skill. So... Oh, and then the customized shifting ink. You can play living skill under the control of another investigator at your location. That seems pretty sweet. Subtle deception at the start of your turn. You can choose to not remove one charge from living ink and ignore its ability for the remainder of the round. That's cool. I like that upgrade a lot because it allows you to keep it around for when you actually need it. Oh, I like this one. I like this one a lot. Imbued ink. Living Ink enters plays with two additional charges and takes up an arcane slot instead of a body slot. I like it. Elder Ink, circle another skill. Elder Ink, circle another skill. Oh, jeez, you can go crazy with this one. And then the first Elder Ink is two. The, th the next one is three. Then Macabre Deception, Living Ink gains reaction. After you reveal a chaos token with a symbol, exhaust this and place one charge on it. Okay. And then Vibrancy, Living Ink grants an additional plus one to the circle skills and minus one to each other skill. That's kind of cool. I like that one a lot. I feel like that one's a really solid, really interesting uh, choice.
summoned servitor customizable as an additional cost to oh this is an ally and a uh um arcane slot that's kind of interesting you must discard another asset you control this feels like it's going to be absurdly powerful with just how much cost you have to pay it Summon servitor enters play at your location. It can take one action during each of your turns, which can only be used to take the following action. Move this to a uh, connecting revealed location. We're about to see some crazy stuff. I'm telling you, I'm calling it now with this customizable thing. This is like a, this is like a, um, like a familiar that you've summoned. Cause I'm guessing we're going to see some new actions on this card. Okay, so Armored Carapace, Summoner Servants, gains a health value of three. It can be assigned damage dealt to any investigator at your location. Okay. Uh, add this action, Fight. You can fight an any enemy at this location with a base fight of four. Ignore the aloof and retaliate keyword for this attack. Okay. Jaws that snatch. Add this action, Evade. You may attempt to evade any enemy at this location with a base foot of four ignore the alert keyword for this evasion attempt nice um add this action investigate you investigate the location with the base uh book of four wings of night after summoned servitor moves from your location to a connecting location you can move to that location as well So it's a free move, basically. Uh, dominance. It no longer takes up uh, either an arcane or an ally slot. Okay, so you can kind of choose which one it's going to take up. Then dreaming call. Instead of discarding another asset you control in order to play summoning servitor, you may return that asset to the owner's hand. And then as a five cost upgrade, Summoner, summon servant can take two different actions instead of one during each of your turns. That feels really strong. It feels really, really powerful. Um, really interesting though. Then we've got power word customizable fast play only during your turn attached to a non elite enemy at your location. The attached enemy as an action, if the attached enemy at your location, if the attached enemy is at your location, parlay, give it a command limit once per round per command. Go, this enemy moves in a direction of your choice. Cower, this enemy exhaust. That's pretty sweet. That's pretty sweet. Then let's see what it customizes into. Betray, deal one damage to any enemy at this enemy's location with an equal or lower fight value of that enemy. Okay, I like that. Mercy, add the command, investigate at this enemy's location, heals damage or horror equal to the respective damage or horror values. Okay. Confess, add the command, confess, discover one clue at the enemy's location if its health is equal to or higher than the location shroud. Okay. Distract. Automatically evade an any enemy at this location with an equal or lower evade value of that enemy. Okay. Greater control. Power word gains quick action. Return power word to your hand. Okay. That's a excellent upgrade right there. So you can just pop it back right before the enemy dies. I like that a lot. Bonded. You can activate the parlay ability on power word from up to one location away from the attached enemy. Okay. Oh, okay. So it's currently only if it's at your location. This allows to be one away from your location. Tongue Twister. When you play Parlay with Power Word, you can give up to two different commands. Sweet. Then Thrice Spoken. You can include three copies of Power Word in your deck. When you give a command using one copy, also give that command to each other enemy with one copy of Power Word attached. That's sweet. I really like that card. I really like that card. That's fun. Okay, we're moving out of our customizable card. We've got Ceremonial Sickle. 
<laughs> I don't know why I thought that was so funny. Uh, so fight, either use your brain or get plus one fight for this attack. When you initiate this ability, choose one. We can exhaust the ceremonial sickle and place one doom on it to get plus one skill value and deal plus one damage for the attack. Or if this attack defeats an enemy, remove one doom from ceremonial sickle. That's pretty cool. So, yeah, so the, the combo there kind of looks like you're going to... So you'll, you'll attack with plus one, plus one. And if it's like a three health enemy, you deal two damage, then you'll attack again. You don't have to exhaust it for the second one, and then you can remove the doom. So if you can set it up, set it up correctly, then that's, that's really cool. I like that a lot. Got dousing rod, investigate, either use your brain or get plus one. So this is going to be the same thing. Um, exhaust dowsing rod to place one doom to remove to a connecting location or if this investigator discovers investigation discovers the last clue at the location remove one doom from dowsing rod okay just gives a little bit more flexibility to mystics hallow chalice so this can be choose investigator to location and either exhaust hallow chalice to place one doom on it to heal two damage or two horror from that investigator or heal one damage or horror from that investigator if you heal the last damage or horror you can remove one doom from it cool so i i like i like these cards with the investigator that also has a, just a lot of doom and it feels like you're going to a couple of times throughout the game maybe whenever you can remove doom from cards you control or whenever you can when you're one away from progressing the current agenda just go crazy and have an epic turn onyx pentacle evade either use your brain or get plus one feet for this evasion we can exhaust onyx pentacle Pinnacle and place one doom on it to target any enemy at your location or a connecting location and get plus one skill value for the evasion attempt. Cool. If you succeed by two or more, remove one doom from Pinnacle. Nice. Eldric Initiation. For each arcane slot you have, draw one card, max of five. For each filled arcane slot you have, choose and discard one card from your hand. Explosive Ward. Before you play Explosive Ward, you may discard any number of cards from your hand from your arcane slots. Okay. Well, I guess if their if their charges are gone, deal X damage to a non-elite enemy engaged with you. X cannot be greater than the number of empty arcane slots you have. This attraction does not provoke attacks of opportunity. Oof. That feels crazy. It's a non-elite, so little bit of hindrance there but still feels pretty good string of curses parlay choose a non-elite enemy at your location and either automatically evade the enemy and place one doom on it it cannot take damage from the remainder of this round discover one clue at your location that feels like a lot of things happening if that enemy has one or more doom on it defeat it gain one resource for each doom that was on it okay so oh it's an event interesting our first level one card is Binder's Jar. You get plus one arcane slot for each enemy beneath Binder's Jar. And after a non-elite enemy is defeated at your location, place that enemy face down under Binder's Jar, limit two. So up to five new arcane slots. And then when the enemy attacks you, discard an enemy beneath Binder's Jar that shares their trait with the attacking enemy, cancel that attack. That feels really solid. That feels really, really solid. Ghastly Possession. After you commit Ghastly Possession to a skill test on an asset, choose one. Place one Doom on that asset. Ghastly Possession gains two uh, wilds. That's pretty sweet. If this, if this test is successful, either remove one Doom from that asset or replenish half of its uses. Round it down. That's, that's cool. That's really cool. 
astral mirror this takes up a body slot for each of your arcane slots that are empty you have one additional hand slot oh okay okay so now we can turn those um those arcane slots into some hand slots especially if you have like binders jar you get up to four arcane slots okay i'm, I'm a fan of that i'm a fan of that you may take an additional action during your turn which can only be used to play an asset into one of your hand slots very cool very very cool ellie rubash you get plus one skill value while resolving a skill test on an, the attached asset one do oh one doom on the attached asset does not count towards the agenda's threshold and as a quick action you can exhaust her choose an action in your play area with one or more doom on it and attach it uh, or switch it with the attached asset. You can have two attached assets. So you can start loading up Doom and not worry about it when you have Ellie or L. That's pretty sweet. That's pretty cool. I like that. Moonlight Ritual. We've seen this card before. Fast play only during your turn. Remove all Doom from a non elite card at your location. There you go. Doom Mitigation. Sin Eater, a level three card that is permanent and exceptional. Wow, okay, so six experience cost. Exhaust Sin Eater as a quick action. Move one Doom from an asset you control to Sin Eater. Then either ready that asset or place one charge on it. And as a quick action, remove, or as an action, remove all Doom from Sin Eater. Whoa, okay, so that starts to really open up the archetype because you can, yeah, you can just, eat all of the doom on the table from the assets you can control and then like with what's her face don't remember her name amina uh so whenever you play an asset you can reduce its cost by three and it enters with a doom then you have zoo or sin eater that's already out there and you can eat that doom and then once you need to probably when you're two away from advancing in case you draw that a treachery card that adds a doom and immediately has you advance then you can just eat all of that for one action oh that's cool that's really sweet i like that a lot uncage the soul you may discard a spell or ritual asset you control play a spell or ritual card from your hand or discard pile reducing its resource cost by three cool or your discard pile okay Okay, that's pretty sweet. So you can you can pull back some spells or ritual cards that you've already tossed, hoping that you're gonna get or being able to get this back and play it for free with a three cost upgrade or three cost event or three XP event. Hey, an upgrade to the ceremonial sickle. So fight, either use your brain or get plus one for this attack. When you initiate this ability, you can choose to place one doom and get plus three and deal one damage instead of what was the other one? plus one and deal one damage or if this attack defeats an enemy ready sickle sickle uh, ready ceremonial sickle and remove all doom from it so the lower one you just remove the doom this one it gets ready pretty sweet uh and then another uh dowsing rod and upgraded a four four xp version of this so you use your brain or get plus one book for the investigation when you initiate the ability choose to exhaust housing rod place one doom you get plus two for the investigation or if it discovers the last clue you can ready and remove the doom from it so very similar similar to the upgraded sickle and then an upgraded onyx pinnacle so evade you can use your brain or get plus one feet for the evasion we can exhaust onyx pinnacle and place one doom on it to target any enemy you get plus three and then if you succeed by two or more, uh, ready and remove all doom from it. So, yep. So like the upgrades, no level fives for the, the mystics either. No level fives for the mystics. Okay. Let's go through the survivor cards now. I think the survivor cards are some of my favorite types of cards. I just really like the like the the whole feel of I'm not supposed to be here like <laughs> and so 
Let's go there. So we got a pocket multi-tool, customizable, limit one per investigator. During a skill test you're performing, exhaust the pocket multi-tool to get plus one skill value for the test. Very, very, very cool. Let's see what the customizable brings in. Yep. Detachable. Other investigators at your location may use the ability on pocket. Okay. Okay, that's pretty sweet. Pry bar. You get an additional plus one skill value if this is during a skill test on a treachery. Nice. Sharpened knife. You get an additional plus one skill value if this is during an attack. Uh, one, if it's during an evasion attempt. If it's during an investigation. And then after you fail a skill test, uh, ready the pocket multi-tool. And spring loaded. Pocket multi-tool, its ability is now reaction ability and triggers when you would fail a skill test, you're performing exhaust multi-tool um to get plus one. Oh, that's pretty sweet that's pretty cool i like that a lot so now you pretty much have a plus one but you only need to exhaust it if you're gonna fail at least by one so oh well, i guess it could be plus two depending on what action you have upgraded before so that's fun We got makeshift trapped customizable uses two times if makeshift trapped has no time discard it attached to your location F each non elite enemy at your location gets minus one fight and minus one evade and then at the end of the round remove one time from makeshift trap it customizes into not this improvised timer so when you play makeshift trap you can increase or decrease its uses by one I bet you there's a way to return it to your hand. Tripwire only trigger makeshift trap forces ability. If there's one or more enemies at the attached location, that's nice. Simple. Uh, it can be, it can, it's fast and you can be played as a quick action. Uh, poisonous. When you remove one or more time from makeshift trap, deal one damage to an enemy at the attached location. That's pretty cool. I like that a lot. Um, remote configuration. When you play makeshift trap, you can attach to any revealed connecting location. Okay. Sweet. Net non elite enemies at the attached location cannot move or make attacks of opportunity. Nice. Explosive device. When makeshift trap has no time and is discarded, deal three damage to each enemy and, and investigator at that location. Nice. That's so cool. And it's at the end of the round. So it will be after enemies move if they have the hunter keyword. So you do have to plan that, but you can, with the improved timer, you know, make it one round and then set it up so that you're going to kill everything there. I like that. That's, that's just fun. If nothing else, like that's just a fun card. And then grizzled, this is a customizable skill card. I don't know if we've seen one of these. I think this is kind of the first one that we've seen. When you purchase grizzled, choose and record two traits on its upgrade sheet. If this skill test, if this is a skill test on a on or against an encounter card, including fighting, evading, or parlaying, Grizzle gains two wild resources for each of the chosen traits the encounter card possesses. Okay, that's pretty sweet. So if you choose, oh, traits, I guess, can you do elite? You can just do really, be really good at fighting elites. Specialist allows you to get another trait, another trait for specialist. Uh, nemesis for three upgrades. If this is a skill test against the and gets an enemy with a chosen trait and that test is successful, you may attach Grizzle to that enemy. Reduce the difficulty of test on or against the attached enemy by one. Okay, so very, very much making it easier for your teammates or your future test against yourself. This is an expensive upgrade card. It's one, two, three, four, five. Mythos Harden. If this skill test is on a treachery card with a chosen trait and the skill and the test is successful, you can add both Grizzled and that treachery to the victory display. Okay. Um, so it doesn't get shuffled back in. After you draw an encounter card with a chosen trait, return one copy of Grizzled from your discard pile to your hand. That's cool. 
So now you're getting Grizzled back as a level 5. So no matter whenever you draw that trait, you're going to get it. You're going to get Grizzled. That's pretty cool. I like that. Idol of Xanthos. When you are dealt damage and or horror, exhaust these idle to discard up to three cards from your hand. Cancel that much damage or horror. Oh. Huh. Interesting. Hey Maddie, sorry I had to step out for a bit. Hope the cards look fun to play. The cards are the cards are looking interesting. I wasn't a huge fan of all the rogue cards. Um, but the customizable cards I'm a huge fan of. So far the the, the customizable cards have been really interesting. And so really really cool stuff there and then i do like the uh the doom and the secret the new seeker archetype so you're discarding or you're placing doom on a lot of cards and then you have ways to remove that doom and then sin eater is a exceptional level three card that as a quick action you can exhaust it and move a doom to sin eater and then as an action you can remove all doom from sin eater and so you have an archetype where you're throwing doom all over the table and then one per round you're eating that doom and then when you want to trigger it you can erase all that doom from the table and so especially with the new um mystic you are able to use star lord right place the doom and reduce the cost by three and so now you have a doom that can immediately be eaten by sin eater and then you can use an action to clear it but you can use an action two turns from now when it has three doom on it to clear it it's it seems really fun got improvised shield this can only be played from your discard pile okay force when improvised shield is defeated shuffle it into your deck instead of discarding it okay that's kind of fun um nice end of the road fast play during it during your turn only if the final agenda is in play oh okay draw one card gain one resource and gain one additional action remove end of the road from the game <laughs> nice that's kind of fun situationally good exploit weakness Fast, play before revealing a chaos token during an attack or an evasion attempt you are performing, and only if the difficulty of this test is currently zero. Okay, that, that's a lot of qualifiers there. Trash can lit as a shield, I love it. Yeah, <laughs> it's great. <laughs> uh, this test automatically succeeds. Instead of this test normal effects, discard the attack, attacked or evaded enemy. If it's an elite, automatically evade and deal three damage to it instead. Making preparations, max two dilemma per round. Revelation, so this is an event. Um, uh, oh, revelation, it's whenever you draw it. Choose two skills. Until the end of the investigation phase, each investigator gets plus one to the chosen skills and minus one to each other skill. Interesting. <laughs> so that could get, that could get really good or really really bad depending on the scenario that you're in but each investigate each investigator so if you draw it and you go fight every investigator is getting plus fight plus mind minus two minus one book minus one evade that's kind of cool i like that predator or prey max two dilemma um What happens if you draw this card in the upkeep phase? So it's it's a revelation. So as far as I understand that you have to resolve it whenever you draw it. Choose two skills until the end of the round or until the end of the investigation phase. So is that the following investigation phase? I assume that is how that reads. Yeah, that would make sense to me. Predator or prey? It's another dilemma. If there are no enemies in play, draw one card. Otherwise, you must decide. Each unengaged enemy moves once towards the nearest investigator. 
or each investigator disengages from each enemy engaged with them and moves once away from the nearest enemy. Interesting. Shed a light fast play before revealing a chaos token during an investigation you are performing and only if the difficulty of the test is currently zero is the difficulty of the test equal to the delta between your skill value and the test value or is the difficulty of the test like test book four and four is the difficulty of the test because having a zero difficulty seems so situational and just like it would not happen that often the test automatically succeeds you discover one additional clue at this location and one additional clue at any location nice so like does this only work if the shroud value is zero or if yeah remind me what is a dilemma in this game i think it's just saying that there's only max two dilemma per round i've never seen the keyword before but it, it says max two to limit per round, probably meaning that you can't draw like three of them and, you know, get plus two books, move the enemies, etc. So I think it's just giving it a keyword to say you can only do two of these types of cards. All right, here's another dilemma. At a crossroads, choose an investigator and decide the chosen investigator must immediately take an action as if it was their turn and then discards one card at random from their hand. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that ability at all. The cho Unless you have zero cards, but the chosen investigator loses one action during their next turn and then draws three cards. That's a level one dilemma. I don't think I'm a huge fan of that one. Lifeline. Max one per turn. Fast play when an investigator's turn would end. That investigator may take X additional action during their turn where X is the number of skill tests they fail during their turn. And then you exile lifeline. <laughs> That's so funny. Another level one dilemma. Nature of the beast. Reveal the top three cards of the encounter deck. Choose an investigator to draw one of the revealed cards and discard the rest. Then choose an investigator to discover one clue at any revealed location. Again, I'm not, I'm not super sold on these dilemma cards. Gumption. Max one committed per skill test. You may commit gumption to any type of skill test. While it's committed to the skill test, that test gets minus two difficulty. Okay, so maybe that's how you're gonna be triggering some of these zeros. So if you have a test that is too difficult, to you, it, you add this level one card to it, it becomes a zero. Interesting. Hey, baseball bat. We've seen this before. I think this is in the core set, actually. Upgraded baseball bat. So you fight. You get plus two fight for the attack. The attack deals plus one damage. If a skull or an auto fail symbol is revealed, you can choose to return baseball bat to your hand or the attack deals an additional plus one damage. Discard baseball after that after this attack. So if you can't deal the damage if you choose the auto fail, but you get to choose to return baseball bat to your hand. Interesting. Katra, East Bank. So this is an ally, level two ally. When you draw a non-weakness card from the top of your deck, before resolving any of its effect, exhaust her, place that card face down beneath her, limit five cards beneath her, draw the new card and replace it. Draw any card beneath Katra. Oh, okay, so she's just like a, she's a bank. She allows you to hold on to cards. I guess she increases your hand size by five is another way to look at it. It's an action text to draw from her. It's kind of interesting. Here's the level two dilemma. Reveal the top card from each investigator's deck and place them in a pile. Repeat this two more times. Choose one of the three piles. Each investigator draws each of their cards from that pile. Shuffle to each weakness and each other in each other pile into its owner's deck. Remove the other reveal card from the game. Interesting. 
not again not super sold on those salvage choose an item asset in your discard pile choose to remove that asset from the game and gain resources equal to its cost or play that asset cost paying its cost like that that's fun the old key ring three keys there are no keys on old key ring discard it your location gets minus two shroud for this investigation if you succeed remove one key and this def if this difficult if this test difficulty is zero discover one additional clue nice level three i will have to do a little bit of homework to figure out what they mean by if you're if the difficulty is zero so i'm not 100 percent sure on that and we got fickle fortune which is our last card it's so we only go up to level three with the survivor cards this this expansion this is another dilemma revelation you must decide place one doom on the current agenda each investigator heals three damage and three horror okay or remove one doom from the current agenda each investigator takes one direct damage and one direct horror remove fickle fortune from the game i it could be i i just like i'm not quite sure how i like those dilemma cards i think there, there's probably a build around it that works well, but also I put cards in my deck. I want to be able to play them, not just rev or use them when I draw them. So interesting. Alrighty, we got one more set of cards to go through and those are the basic cards. So we just got a couple and then we're not going to look at the weaknesses. I will look at the weaknesses. Why not? Hyper physical shot caster. That thing looks crazy. Look at that thing. That's so cool. Customizable. It uses four Aether. If this has no Aether, discard it. We can spend one Aether to resolve the manifest ability on the hyper physical shotcaster's current form. Exhaust hyper physical shotcaster, change its form to one you have unlocked on its upgrade sheet. Let's look at the upgrade sheet. Whoa, that's a lot of text. <laughs> that's a ton of text. Okay, so I'm gonna hold this so I can like look at it. So rail shooter, it has the form manifest. Fight with any skill. This fight with any skill. This attack deals plus one damage. Okay, okay, gives you, and this is a basic card too. So this can go in anyone's deck. And so as a four, you unlock fighting ability with investigate or your book icons or something like that so this feels like it could really open up some solo play telescanner it investigates investigate with any skill if you succeed discover a clue at any reveal location instead of your location translocator evade you can evade with any skill before or after this attempt you can move your investigator to a non-elite enemy at your location to a connecting location or vice versa reality collapser that one sounds like the one i want to go for uh, test any skill. Uh, if you succeed, discard from play a non weakness treachery that is not attached to an elite enemy. Okay. Matter Weaver. Choose an asset in your hand and test skill X, where X is that asset's cost. If you succeed, play that asset at no cost. Oh, cool. Okay. Um, Etheric Link. It enters play with two additional Aether. It comes with four Aether. So, I mean, it's not, it's pretty cool. Then in power configuration while using manifest ability, you get plus two skill value. Okay. That's really cool. That's, that's really, really cool. feels like that provides a lot of flexibility to. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. I like it. We got a tool belt. Each attached asset takes up no slots and its box is treated as if it were blank, except for traits. Exhaust tool belt. Choose one. Attach a tool asset in play to tool belt and switch a tool asset in your play with the attached asset or detach an attached asset. Okay. So it just allows you to have things on the table. I liked that. That's nice. That's nice. It's a fast action too, so you can be swapping in and out. You can have your hammer. 
Yeah, you can have your hammer and your gun. And so, like, in one of my games, I lost... Well, I lost my gun because of something else. But if I had my gun still out, I wanted to play, like, another hand slot. I could throw that up, throw the gun over there, and then maybe if I lose the hammer, I immediately have the gun back. It's a, it's a body slot, which can be a little bit contended for, but that's nice. Refine. As an additional cost to play refine, spend an action. So it's a two action. And then immediately mark a checkbox on an upgrade sheet for a customizable card you own, even if it's not in play. Max once per game for each event. That's so cool. Oh my gosh. Okay, so it's a two cost, two action cost, three cost card, but you can check a box. I don't know if the math actually works out to meaning that that's a cool card, but it's a really fun card, if nothing else, because I can now... That's pretty sweet. If you hold that until the end of the game, and then you have, if you have a, if you have a dead turn, you can just upgrade. Or oh shoot, actually no. If if this is the first action you take in the game, you can unlock an ability on, or actually anytime you unlock an ability on the customizable asset for that game. I like it. I like that a lot. We got an upgraded flashlight. Uh, when you perform a skill test while investigating, it's a reaction. Attempting to evade, spend one supply. That test gets minus two difficulty. Okay. So this was also designed by the Council in Exile at Arkham Knights 2020. So good job there. That's kind of that's really cool that they're starting to put like cards that were designed by by the community and giving them credit on the card. I, I'm a big fan of that. Then our last card, we have a permanent exceptional level three soul sanctification. For every point of damage and or horror you heal in excess of an investigator's current damage or horror, place one resource on soul sanctification as an offering. This still counts as healing. Spend one offering, you get plus two skill value for the test, limit twice per test really interesting yeah an upgraded flashlight it allows you to evade i've been seeing flashlight around for a long time but now now flashlight's got an upgrade on it you can flash it's really bright you can shine it in someone's eyes and run away that was the investigator expand what are these cards oh these are the uh weaknesses so we got lurker in the dark so uh it's a guardian investigator only hunters it's a three, two, one, and then it can only be attacked or damaged using weapons or tactic events. It takes one fear or damage from each source. That sounds horrendous. <laughs> I don't like that at all. Oh, these are kind of cool. You get one, and uh, you get one weakness that is tied to the investigator type. I like that. So this is the secret to zero cost event. As an additional cost to play Quantum Paradox, you must choose to discard four other cards from your hand. Ugh. If Quantum Paradox is in your hand at the end of your turn, reveal it and take one horror. That sounds horrible. Wow, that's brutal. That is brutal. Pay your due. This is a 10 cost event. It's a rogue investigator only as an additional cost to play pay or do you may spend any number of additional actions reduce its cost by five for each action spent okay so if you spend three actions it's a free you kill your turn it's free if pay or do is in your hand at the end of your turn reveal and take one damage we got a mystic only ectoplasmic horror hunter the first time you reveal a chaos token while attacking or attempting to evade reveal an additional token for each empty arcane slot you have Ooh, so that was the other thing maddie the there's a, a lot of cards that give you additional arcane slots or build off of having additional arcane slots so having this ectoplasmic horror taking up one of those slots or like playing into that like attacking your strength it, I, that's really cool game design right there then underprepared uh survivor play only if underprepared is the only card in your hand and you have exactly one resource in your resource pool <laughs> while underprepared is in your hand each card you commit to skill test is considered to have one fewer matching skill these are brutal these are some brutal uh weaknesses but 
really cool awesome i i am a big fan of the customizable cars i think that there are some really cool investigators the the player cards didn't seem overly interesting or overly strong to me which that's fine um there's some cool archetypes in there there are some gems but I am, I'm really excited about the customizable cards. I think that kind of makes up for the expansion. And then also some of these um, investigators look incredibly fun to play. But that is the Scarlet Keys investigator expansion. Thank you all so very much for hanging out. Um, I plan on playing through this expansion. The, the, uh, the actual gameplay, the, the campaign expansion comes out, I believe, in october maybe november and so around that time we will start and dive into the scarlet keys expansion so i'm looking forward to that but thank you all for hanging out and enjoy arkham hope you have some fun builds if you have had or if you've made some fun decks or utilize some of these cards let me know um probably in the comments because i'm about to log off of twitch but thanks for hanging out and i'll see you next time peace